having done that nice brown one earlier on, the golds and the beach, let's go on to a, a green theme. Lots of beautiful leaves, some light shining through, perhaps a couple of sheep in the foreground hidden amongst all of this. But not copying out just one landscape directly, taking a whole series of the favourite things I find amongst a few landscapes. And this feeling of the explosion and the quality of trees. I've built up a little bit of texture in here already. Um, not too much, just enough to, uh, to give a bit of texture to uh, what I want to be a fairly plain canvas with the use of the roller and paper strokes. But just enough to give a bit of texture underneath. Um, so the first thing is then to roll with acrylics and then to work out possibly with the oils at the very finish to give very bright colours, vibrance. But not to treat it too figuratively in between the abstract and the figurative, just to get the feeling of the whole thing. OK, let's take a look at what we're going to need for this painting, which we've almost finished now. We're about to go from the acrylics onto the oils. I have my set of acrylic paints in a stay wet, homemade stay wet palette, just a sandwich box with a piece of uh, paper towel in the bottom. I keep it wet, put the paints on top, and when that's closed, that'll stay uh, wet forever. My set of oil paints for the final work. Remember, we can put the oils over the acrylics, not the acrylics over the oils. Some painting knives. That's one of my favourites, this one here. Um, and a sponge, and you can see the sponge is quite textural. And it's very useful because I need these larger bits of texture for the uh, leaf textures you're going to see. I've got my full set of filberts and some little rounds. And as well, which is very important, my little roller. Very, very useful tool indeed for making textures. You'll see me using the roller for textures later. And finally, just two more tools, these rather useful uh, syringes which I've used for trickling the paint on to make branches as well. The first area I'm going to work on will be this one here, where I just want to get uh, a rather misty effect of a valley going on back there. So what I'm going to do is use my acrylics. And the brush at this stage, you come on with um, a roller later for a little bit of the background. There are some areas I want to put in fairly figuratively at the moment with more detail. And I'm going to just work a bit of cream across that. And on those days, let's see. Yeah, it's just arrived now. Well, I've worked on this part now, just in the top corner. Now I need to start working across the painting and uh, finish the rest of the background sky off and then start to work down into the sheep and the rest of the background before working all the stronger, brighter colours of the leaves and so on. And with the usual of making a grey, I'm going to mix some um, blue and brown, which always makes us quite a nice grey. In this case I'm using a cerulean and uh, a bit of brown sienna to give myself a cool base colour for these sheep that are in shadow but little bits of light gleaming over them. I'll paint the shadow colour in first fairly thickly because I want to lose the under painting. I want to get this texture working as well. So I've got to work into all this texture. Don't leave any bits of the white canvas showing through the texture. That's pretty important with the textural work like this. So that's our bluey grey for the background colour of the sheet coming on. It takes a fair amount of paint. Yeah, try off a bit. I want to mix up a slightly warmer grey. I'm going to take some yellow ochre. A little bit of white, tiniest touch of the brown, because we want the effect now of the um, sunlight shining through the trees and uh, onto these sheep. So using the fluffiness of the brush I'm going to give a little bit of texture in leaving that dark grey just showing through the surface. Just mixing a little bit with the brush here. 
sheep's nose there. A little grey coming down here. Try and get the wooliness. And we're not going to copy sheep. We're not actually painting a painting about sheep. We are using the images within the abstract qualities of the painting. And we take some of that same cerulean blue, this time no brown. And just bring it down to the fluffiness of the sheep. Using it almost like a glaze, not too thickly, just gently hinting at the cool shadow coming down from the blue light above. Plenty of colour in this painting. <coughs> now, I'm going to come in with the darks, I'm going to change brushes, and mix uh, a little bit of the black with the blue. Don't want it too dark. So a little bit of black with a bit of ultramarine blue. And we've got to try and paint in a bit more of the head of these sheep in a bit more detail this time to really make it look a bit more like sheep. And we'll just start to work a few darks <coughs> just to make it stand out a bit. I'm going to make some texturing later as long as I've got the basics. Okay, now we're going to come back with the lighter colours. Mix some white and yellow ochre, remember always the light colour first, a little touch of purple, and let's start to feel some of the other colours around the sheep. Slightly warmer tints coming in. And in these sort of conditions, which are very dry, the paint's drying very quickly, so I've got to keep mixing water with it, or uh, I don't have any left on the palette. about do for our sheep for now. Bring them out a bit more later maybe, but I don't need much more on that for the minute. Before I do anything with the rolls, I want to get in at least background and the light comes coming in behind here with the brush and then I'll come in with the roller afterwards. Took quite a lot of paint to start with to really get this coated because this canvas being cheaper is uh, also quite absorbent. I think it's time to get into the very darks now. We get rid of that white canvas, we can start to see a bit of where things should be or are. Use a small paint roller now and just get a little bit more texturing going on back in behind into this uh, background.
And then to that we'll add a little bit more colour. A little bit of uh, rose and a wee touch of burnt sienna maybe. It'll give us quite an interesting warm for there. Just play around with a little bit of warmer colour on the canvas texture surface. I'm going to use sponge later as well, so all sorts of things for, for this rather fun. I'm leaving a little bit of that texture come over the sheet, you can always touch it up a bit later, but I'm going to sort of unity going on. So we'll let some of these colours come through here as well. Okay, finished using the roller there. I want to go back to the darks. I need to be painting in these um, dark branches at the moment, and that's going to range between very deep blue and black, as well as some of the trees in the background. Let's start with those trees in the background. So I'll take some ultramarine black and just start to uh, with the acrylics still. I'm still working with the acrylics. I'll just start to feel some of these shapes and trees going on back here. Using an ordinary round brush, and I'll just paint them in in the background. They're going to come over the tops of these with leaves again afterwards, in fact, just to start to get the effects of uh, how this can work back here, but not actually painting any one particular thing. Remembering that trees always grow from thick to thin. So we can go thick, thinner, 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 but we can't go thin, thick, thick, thin. We've got to be going always from the thin to the thick or the thick to the thin. And again, the painting will be going through various stages. It's not just paint by numbers and finish. We're going to be losing it and finding it and coming back in again afterwards and constantly working to get the feeling of this. Woodland. All these different greens I'm going to place on top. This is just really a background atmosphere. I need to play with the blues a bit more and amongst this waterfall as it's coming down. Do some trickery effects on here later as well, just to see what um, more abstract uh, effects we can get playing with these branches. Well, it's time to see what we can do with a bit of sponge and a bit more texture in. Start with some black, I think. Don't get the sponge too mucky, and we don't want to be repeating patterns either. But let's see what we do. A little bit of texturing going on down the road. It's about time to start actually mixing up some of these lovely greens and lighter shades in the background. A little bit more texture with them, just medium tones at first. Right, I've laid the uh, canvas flat now, and we're going to experiment a bit with these um, dark lines and twigs and branches. I'm going to use a couple of uh, syringes with some black paint in that I've mixed with uh, a bit more PVA glue and some water to make it a bit more trickly, so that we're actually able to trickle these shapes around like that, which is rather fun. 
and we should be able to use the syringes also. As you can see I can just trickle this on and get these effects of as long as it's uh, let's see, let's get it going. Nice light, rather than having to paint them all with a thin uh, thin brush, it's rather nice to be able to get other effects as well. Because we're going to have other leaves coming in quite closely across this in many places. Now let's try the uh, syringes and see what happens with them. A lot of art has to be experimental, so we're, uh, we're also obliged to do just the same here, aren't we? And so you can drag these lines across, which is rather fun, the canvas. And I can build up the... So we're now using to triple and to use this syringe technique for big effects as well. got my uh, acrylic colours onto here, I feel that I'd like to have something a little bit stronger now. It's time to come back in and try and brighten up some of these yellows, which I couldn't quite get, oranges and yellows, which I couldn't quite get with um, the acrylics as brightly as I'd like. You see by putting on these oils now, I can get some much brighter shades of the yellow, catch the sunlight more. I'll leave some of the duller colours, but I just want pure colour on some of these now to stand out and give us this three-dimensional look to the painting. Just touch up the ends of some of them and make some of them a bit brighter. We need to bring these into quite a bit of the painting. because the acrylics weren't quite as bright as these oils can go and now we can bring it a little bit further forward towards us with these colours this effect of sunlight glistening through the coolness of the woods as well as the sunlight you really give a, a wonderful effect of texture and these um, lovely light colours that we want to get and the sunlight glistening across leaves. 
and we make the warms warm the cools will be cooler and so we can play one colour against another and try and get a picture that's full of sunlight really cheerful, bright moving from that to the other side of the painting we need some slightly lighter green so I've got some really nice man-made prepared greens here which are lovely and bright and we can just bring into here to help bring out the foreground greens a bit. Sunlight comes across there. And really try and get this cascading effect of uh, sunlit leaves. almost makes you squint into the sunlight and the cooler greens in details like the grasses and things down here we can just start to hint at uh, the other colours coming in and really try and find these Beautiful sunny colours. That's normal. Um, it isn't just putting uh, lines lighter and lighter or brighter and brighter. We can also play with this business of um, making things darker behind to make them show out. So if I put a bit more purple and cerulean and purple and uh, ultramarine into here in the background, it should help to bring those leaves out a bit. So we can use the light against the dark cool against the warm to also make things seem brighter because the thing next to them is darker. It's more an illusion of distance there. Small things but very important. And this glistening light coming through. Little touches here and there can make all the difference as well. You just have to see where it's going to be needed. Put in some pure cobalt here now to play the blues a bit and the shadows there. Push it back a bit against the warm. Get these cool shadows working a bit. I've said this before, but it's surprising how many blues there are working in your greens. I mean, these little bits of pure colour will they work one to another as broken colour. So I think we're nearly there. Just some areas that I think need tarting up a bit with them um, this texture because they're still a little bit too large and to lead the eye back in around here because otherwise it's shooting off this corner so we'll just lighten up a bit to there and that should do it Just a matter of a signature. Now let's take a look at some of the texture on this. And you can see some of it's built up here, but there's quite a lot done just with the sponge and with the brush and so on. <coughs> 